Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my Doodly Wall review for tonight, Monday, July 25th, 2016. The Aether River Battleground, and more importantly, the new era has begun. The first wall since the split, since the draft last week. A new era officially begins tonight with a new wall, the new SmackDown tomorrow night. New set two, new theme music, new feel. Um, since I didn't make a proper Battleground review since I was at a grab party last night DJing it, I'll give you my thoughts on Battleground throughout the throughout the review of this wall. Uh, that was a fun pay-per-view. And coming out of that pay-per-view, and knowing that this was the first night of the new era of wall, I'm probably not the only one who's going to say this, wall of the year. For three-hour walls, make fun of three-hour walls all you want. This is an excellent three-hour wall. The new era... It was all about three letters. NXT. NXT stars stole the night tonight. As you saw my subtitle. A former NXT champion who got drafted last week. Finally made his in-wing debut tonight in the main roster. Plus, two women I've been begging for almost a year and a half. To have a one-on-one -on -one match on the main roster to show the... Fans at the Women's Revolution's here. They finally got the opportunity tonight, and they fucking killed it! Tonight, they fucking killed it. They got the opportunity to shine, and they got the opportunity, and they got the respect in the match that they fucking deserved. And I'm gonna warn you now, I'm gonna mock the hell out when I get to that moment of the night. So I was so happy. I've been begging about a year and a half on my videos about these two women. And they finally got that time tonight. So long as we begin wall, the new wall, new music. I think it's like a Shine Down song. New set a little bit. And of course, new commentary with Corey Graves joining the wall announced team. And JBL going back to SmackDown. I think Corey Graves for his first night did pretty well. You know, he's kind of a heel guy and a good heel. But a, watching NXT and loving his commentary. NXT is a great heel. So we began well with the commentary back in the back by the Titan Tron. That's what it was when the brand split first happened in 02, was the announcers of Wall were in the back by the Titan Tron. So they got that set up again. With the commentators in the back by the Titan Squad Titan Tron. So Mick Foley and Stephanie came out to address the fans and address their roster, which came out to the Titan Tron to get a Basically like a state of the wall address. From the new GM, Mick Foley, and the new commissioner, Stephanie Wall was in Pittsburgh tonight. DC crowd, I like the DC crowd better at Battleground. But this Pittsburgh crowd's a good crowd, especially for all the stuff that happened tonight. Of course, the biggest thing was about the main event of Battleground, the triple threat match between Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose. A match that I said should have been at SummerSlam. But now we know why it wasn't at SummerSlam, because these three guys were separated. By the draft, with Reigns and Rollins going the wall and Impulse on SmackDown. It was a fun triple threat. Really good triple threat. Impulse and Rollins carried a match. Some good spots, including the double power bomb to Reigns on the announce table. And I'm glad that even though they had the GMs and commissioners for both Raw and SmackDown at ringside, they didn't ruin the match. You know, they were just there as spectators. You know, it was a fun match. And Impulse won. Thus bringing the WWE Championship to SmackDown, which leaves the question. What's up with the titles? About, are they exclusive to one brand? Well, we have no answers concerning exclusivity involving the Women's Championship or the tag team. We did get a definitive answer that yes, the WWE Championship is a SmackDown exclusive title. So, they are creating a second title for my nine wall. There was pros and cons by having two titles. That one's more important than the other. Well, it could be that way, especially the name. The name of the new belt is the WWE Universal Championship. Oh, because it's the WWE Universe, right? We are named for a title. But hey, they couldn't do the WWE World Championship because they're putting back the world back in WWE Whatever Championship. For a little bit, they were just calling it the WWE Championship and minusing the world from it. Now they're calling it the WWE World Every Championship again. That. So, they would have a two Fatal 4 Way matches. And the winners of those two Fatal 4 Ways would face off in the main event of Raw. And the winner of that match 
with the gun Seth Rollins, the number one pick overall, and more importantly, the number one wall pick for that championship at SummerSlam. And it picked some good people for those Fatal 4 ways. So we have ourselves the first of the two Fatal 4 ways. We have the U.S. Champion, Rusev, who safely defended his title against SmackDown boy, Zack Ryder, in a decent matchup at Battleground, without a tie in a dress. Like, I love Ryder, we love them to win, but Rusev needs to look like a badass, and he did last night in Battleground. He took on the Fatal 4 way Kevin Owens, who stole the show again at Battleground against Sami Zayn, that match was terrific. Anytime these two wrestle each other, they never disappoint me. And they had another epic match tonight, uh, last night at Battleground. It's the end of the feud for now, but they're probably going to feud again. Because they have good matches together. They have good chemistry. Like two women, which I'll get to. It's interesting they called Kevin Owens' Zayn match, Match of the Year candidate. It seems like every match Sami Zayn's in is a candidate for Match of the Year. He has two matches against Owens at Payback and last night at Battleground. The Fatal 4 at Extreme Rules. And of course, the match that I'm calling Match of the Year... Thus far, Zayn Nakamura at NXT TakeOver Dallas. We also had Cesaro, who was not even on Battleground, and got drafted really low on the wall side of things during the draft. He got drafted low, and he vented on a promo on the network. There was a shoot. And I think they're like, hey, we're going to reward you by putting this matchup. But you're also going to be in there with Finn Balor, finally making his debut tonight. I know a lot of people would have been like, it would have had a more impactful debut. It would have given us a more surprise. And not letting us know about it. Let us be shocked about it. Instead of just, oh, he's got the wall. Let's put him in his matchup. But guess what? Especially after the weapon tonight. It didn't matter. Battles the main impact. Fun match to kick off wall. Great for the four way. Great action. Owen's still looking like a badass. Ian Russo had a little team up a little bit. Isolates is all. And then a little give and take. They're doing a battle of anything you can do. I can do better. I can do anything better than you. They had a little better of that, but then that broke up because it's every man for himself, especially with the opportunity to wrestle for a championship at SummerSlam. And Bowie in his first major match on the main roster finally for so long. You know, he looked awesome tonight. You know, wearing that jacket tonight, the Battle Club logo and Matip and all. It's awesome to see him there. Looked natural there. And got the big win delivered to Kudagrad Rusev. And the rules look good early with some big insecurities and even putting people in the accolade at one point. After getting swung a little by Cesar. But I guess he got the coup de grace and went through the victory for Finn Balor. I'm actually glad Owens and Cesar are going to get pinned. I'm glad Cesar and Owens didn't get pinned and Rusev took the pin. So there you go. Finn Balor on to the main event matchup to take on. The winner of our next Fatal 4-Way, which will happen a little later. We had a night of debuts. Tonight, besides Finn's debut, we had a debut of another NXT draftee to Wall. That being Nia Jax. Because NXT draftees from both brands, there was two draftees of NXT that went to Wall. The rest went to SmackDown, being, of course, Mojo Wally, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, and American Alpha. But it's interesting to draft all these women. The NXT women's division is kind of like depleted now with all these women going up. Especially one Nia Jax, who has deeply improved in her ring, ring style. She took on a job of Blake and Miss Frost match against Britt Baker. And Nia killed the hell out of Britt Baker with two leg drops. Looking vicious in a wall debut. So, we'll see how Nia does on wall. You know, maybe a little early. You know, it's like Apollo Cruz's debut. It was too early for him. But Nia Jax questioned if it was too early or not. We'll see how she does on Wall. She's a, I think she has a great wrestlers to compete with on Wall. So there you go. Now on to our second Fatal 4-Way matchup to determine who would face up against Finn Balor tonight to see who would face up against Seth Rollins for the newly named WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam. We have Chris Jericho against Sheamus against Sami Zayn who was coming from this great match against Kevin Owens and almost in his shoulder doing a botch during that match. Botched the move and almost landed on his arm. Almost we injured his shoulder. But thankfully his shoulder held out for him 
any man did the match against these two guys, Sheamus and Jericho and Roman Reigns. Oof. The suspended one is back. He got booed out the building tonight. I'm good he got the pin. He got pinned last night at Battleground. I'm glad he got the pin. It was punishment for suspension. You know. I'm glad he lost in that matchup. I'm glad Wallace didn't get pinned in that. I'm glad Ambrose pinned Waynes. That should have been the end of the money in the bank. Wayne should have been cashed in on by Ambrose. That's the only thing I would have fixed about Ambrose's cashing in. That Wayne should have been the one to be cashed in on. And not Wallace. So anywho, no, fun, I think the first Fire Bowl was a little better than this one, but still a fun match, even with Reigns in it. The other three looked awesome, especially Zayn looked incredible in the matchup again. Had some great moments in the matchup, even in the match against Reigns. And did a lot of carrying. Joker looked decent too, his uh, big uh, highlight where Randy Orton. Orton looked awesome in the mic, by the way. It was one of Orton's best promos in a while. And I love this, no enhancement required. This at Brock Lesnar. Over his two failed drug tests before and after UFC 200. So it's quite a great effort from the three men. Jericho looking good at some point, some good moves. Cold Breaker going for the loss of Jericho as well. But in the end, it was Reigns. He got the big win. Big Superman punch and spirit of Jericho. 1 3 victory in 4 Reigns. I'm glad Zayn didn't get pinned. But I don't, I'm glad that Reigns didn't bury Zayn by pinning him in his matchup. So there you go. Reigns gets a victory. And Reigns with a gun. Finn Balor. In our main event tonight, will Wayne's bury Finn? We shall see. But now on to a celebration for the new day. Even though they lost in a decent six man tag against the Wyatts, who of course got split up by the draft, Nick Xavier acting all hypnotized by Bray and got Sister Abigail after. He got hypnotized for a bit and got scared instead of Bray, but he faced his fear. But then he got scared again when, after his offensive fury in that matchup, Bray did his final walk, got him, folds up to set up for the sister Abigail. New Day is still a lot to celebrate. Brunios is finally an eatable cereal. They can actually buy from FYE stores and FYE.com. The pre-orders are right now on the website. I'm going to wait till it goes in the store. I don't want to do the pre-order right now. And not just because it's 25. I think it's 12 bucks in the store. But it's 25 with a shirt. And I don't, I don't need another New Day shirt. I got two of them, including the Booty O shirt. So. They're celebrating the New Day, but more importantly, they're now celebrating their 337th day of being WWE World Team Champions of the World! As now the longest reigning champions in WWE history. So, guys, knew that after being treated like a joke early on, they found their niche as a comedy heels, and they have now became, they went from being one of the most hated t factions in the company to being one of the most beloved factions in the company. Just like that. And as they were celebrating, they picked a, wand a, a random fan from the crowd. I think it was planted. This Sunny Boy. They got a little silly near there, but then it got really serious as they were dancing with Sunny Boy. The club, Gals and Anderson, attacked the New Day, ruining their celebrations. Now, these two had a feud going, but here's the thing. They had a match, but it was a fatal four-way. Ed Anderson and Cass and the Vaughn villains to that. That was at, uh, I think it was Money in the Bank? Yeah, it was Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank, they had that Fatal 4-Way. That Fatal 4-Way match. But now the club gets a New Day and a one-on-one -on -one match. Probably at SummerSlam. Now, if AJ does this SmackDown, and no Battle Club, I'll say that right now, no Battle Club tonight, I think I'm going to let Battle go on his own for a bit. They'll probably let him team up with Gals and Anderson later. Not instantly. But I think Battle Club will still happen. But not now. You need Battle to have his time, and also the club to have their time to feud with the New Day properly. They attack them, got some good heat, especially throwing the shirt, they spat, they whip the shirts out of New Day, and give the whip shirts, spat on them to the fan, Sonny Boy in the crowd, so that's where you get some heat. So there you go, Club New Day is a feud, because they can't continue the Bray Wyatt feud, 
Because Bray's on SmackDown and the Wyatt's broken up. There's only one Wyatt member left, Braun Strowman. We will see later on. Now on to the next match of the week. Turning Devil. Been gone for a while. Taking on the Mr. Relevant, Curtis Axel. Apparently the social outcasts are broken up. Kind of. Only two of the social outcasts got drafted. Curtis Axel and Bo both being drafted to Wall. And he didn't get didn't get drafted. Maybe because of his eye injury he suffered. So Quick Squash never gets a victory. I hope they give Never an opportunity, especially with the cruiserweight division. Supposedly gonna be on wall. Hopefully never gonna be the centerpiece of it. And after a year and a half in a roster, main roster and getting treated like crap and being underutilized with a short roster now with the brand extension, there is some pros and cons. But some people getting their shine on, including one Finn Balor, and now hopefully some Neville. And now on to the match of the night. The match I've been begging for for a year and a half. I've been saying for a long time this match needs to happen on the main roster. And I said earlier, I never get sick of seeing Owens and Zayn against each other. I never get sick of seeing Sasha and Charlotte against each other. That's why I've been begging for these two to get the opportunity. Sasha Charlotte for the Women's Championship tonight. When they announced it, I was like, you know, I've been begging for this match for over a year. I was like, Saying also as well, this should have been at SummerSlam. This should have been at SummerSlam. They needed a belt. They needed weeks. You know, they had a couple weeks, you know, with Sasha Shaw and colliding with each other, doing walls, and of course a battleground last night with the mystery partner being Bailey. I'm glad it wasn't like someone stupid like Naomi. It barely got a huge pop, and Sasha got the victory in that tag team matchup. Setting up this title match tonight, you know, like I said, they announced it. I was like, this should have had a couple more weeks. This should have had a big build. This should have had a contract signing. But after seeing this match, they didn't need a build. They let their actions do the talking. And I've been talking about the bad booking that WWE's done for the women's division since after WrestleMania. You know, after all the goodwill and all the time and effort and respect, they finally gave the women's division, ditching the Divas name in that title. And having a terrific fatal four, a triple threat match between Sasha Shaw and Becky at WrestleMania. And to go from that in the shitty booking for the women's division, treat it as an afterthought again. And I said it, when they start this feud between Sasha and Shaw, they can redeem all of that with these two. And they fucking did. These two got the match that I've been wanting for a long time. And a lot of others too. But I've been saying, I've been very vocal. About Sasha and Shaw being on a main roster feud and getting the big match they deserved. Could have been a summer slam, but guess what? They deserve this moment tonight. New era of war. You know, first night of the new brand split. These two deserved this time and everything. And this match was fucking phenomenal. It was the match I was hoping it was going to be. They got all the time in the war. It was action packed. Plus, no screwy ending. And Dana got kicked out. I'm glad there was no interference heavy. Like Ric Flair screwing over the matchup. Or we're in the matchup. Dana didn't. And I'm glad that the way Dana got kicked out was a little homage to Eddie Guerrero. So there was one point Sasha uh, Charlotte was walking out with the belt, but then Sasha took it out of her hands. But then as referee turned around, Sasha threw the belt to uh, Dana Brooke and pretended to lay down. A la Eddie Guerrero. Lighting, cheating, stealing. That was a great way to do that because Sasha's been vocal about being an Eddie Guerrero admirer. And this match was the match that these two women deserved. Epic matchup. They went for big spots. Man, Sasha did a big splash over the top rope to Charlotte. She overhit it. But guess what? It was awesome. And she, I hope she didn't get hurt on that because they call it envy poem. But man, that was a nasty landing. And so was Charlotte going for a big splash and a big spot too. And you were even heard holy shit chance. And the crowd was great during this match. You know, and these two told their story. And I never get sick of these two wrestlers. I've seen them live at NXT House Show. And they were the best, one of the best matches of the night. And I love that Shaw did a figure eight over the rope. You know, did it almost the spots I said, spots I saw him do at the NXT House show. You know, great action, great story. A little, there were some sloppy moments, but they made up for it with the passion. And this match I've been wanting these two to have on the main roster to show the main roster, to show the fans that women deserve being a main roster. And deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. 
And these two fucking blew the house down tonight. And these two deserve it. Especially Sasha deserved getting Charlotte on the ground and putting her in the bank statement and tapping Charlotte out the first new champ of the new era. Sasha Banks finally WWE did what fans been wanting. Sasha winning and did what I wanted. You know, what me and many other fans wanted. Sasha and Charlotte to face off one on one. And they get the match they deserved. And get the time they deserved. And be treated with respect. And be respected for their ability. And they got fucking respect tonight. With an epic matchup. I'm marking out. I marked out all night because I've been very vocal. For anyone who's seen my reviews, I've been very vocal about Sasha and Charlotte being put in a big feud and letting them put out a big match on the main roster to finally show everybody the women's revolution is here. That real women's wrestling can be awesome on the main roster. And guess what? They fucking did it. You know, this is the, the twist and lead up of this new era in women's wrestling. And they'll probably be rematched at SummerSlam. And guess what? Hopefully it'll be as epic as this match was tonight. New era for women's wrestling has finally truly arrived as Sasha and Shaw finally delivered a match that we've all been wanting and fucking deserved. You deserve it. Sasha crying after the match. It was an emotional moment. You know what I mean? It would have been more emotional and powerful at SummerSlam. But guess what? Those thoughts went away. For it being the first war of the new era, of the new era of the brand split and all, it was awesome to see Sasha, the first new champ, I mean, of the new era. That is more impactful than winning at SummerSlam, to me. To have a new champion, new era, awesome. And the match that they deserved. So, I applaud and standing ovation to Charlotte and Sasha. You know, I never get sick of these two wrestle. I've seen them on TV and live. And every time they wrestle, they put on matches. I've been applauding them for so long. Long. I've been a big fan of these two work for so long. I've been wanting so long to see them put on an epic match in the main roster. And guess what? They fucking did it tonight. And they deserve every piece of applause from me. And they deserve all sorts of recognition for this match tonight. They fucking deserve it tonight. I'm marking out big for this. Because I've been very vocal about this. So I'm just so fucking happy right now. These two women deserve it. Now on to our next matchup. After that epic showing, we have a bathroom break match. Not a women's match. Yeah, finally. Women's matches recently been treated like bathroom breaks. Not this one. And it deserved all the time in the world. There's a lot of matches and it deserved it. Braun! Oh god, we have new music for Braun Strowman taking on James Ellsworth. What else can you say? Squasher for... Braun Strowman with new ponytail hairdo back. You know, being separated from Bray could be pulling tough for him. You know, with no guiding light. But it's kind of improving. He's been on the main roster for about a year. You know, he is improving a little bit. He's still a goon. We'll see how he does now, especially with no Wyatt to guide him. So we'll see how he does without the guidance of the Wyatt family. Now on to Enzo and Cass. Of course, their match with John Cena against the club last night. The last match with these six colliding with Cena and AJ both being traded off to SmackDown. It was a fun, you know, great six-man tag. Great epic promo from uh, Enzo Battery before the match. It was unsensical, but it was still fun. It was a very fun promo he did. And a fun match, too, even if Cena won. But before anyone says, Ooh, Cena buried the club! Enzo and Cass are on his team. And Cena didn't bury the club. That's SummerSlam. We have seen AJ collide in the one-on-one -on -one match. I and mean, hopefully Cena loses. But I'm hoping Cena loses, but I think Cena's going to win. That Super Cena is going to win against AJ. But if one guy can lose, so can Cena. I'll get to that in a moment. So we have Enzo and Cass taking on the Shining Stars. Making their first appearance on Raw. Since the day, it was interesting, they haven't been since the debut. Because they came out the crickets. During the, and I feared that. When they debuted, I was like, they better not come out the crickets. And they fucking did. And that's why we haven't seen them in a while. We've seen them more vignettes because of the bad reaction they got. The weak reaction they got during the debut. But they came out tonight and they, they get some heat. Especially in what the ends were in cast. And got demolished. And apparently they have a feud going on. 
starting with the golden truth. They had a little gag going on. God, these Pokemon Go references, some feel forced, like Mo and Allo. This kind of almost feel forced, but throughout the evening, you saw Golden Truth, All Truth, catching Pokemon with Pokemon Go, crashing people's locker rooms, even trying to catch the Pittsburgh Penguin on the locker room door of the Santa Cup champion, Pittsburgh Penguins. Let's go, Red Wings! Anyway, they came out to the ring during this match. And all to inadvertently cost going into the uh, inadvertently cost the shining stars the match with him jumping in and catching Pokemon. Shining Girl got distracted, got big boot from Enzo's partner Big Ass, and a big victory for Big Ass and Enzo. So yeah, a few with the shining stars and Golden Troops starting. At least not a few with Brizongo anymore, because Brizongo's on SmackDown, and hopefully we treated a lot better than he did on Raw. Now on to our main event. The winners of the two Fatal 4 Ways. Finn Balor against Roman Reigns. As this match was announced, and it was kind of predictable when we saw they were both in the Fatal 4 Ways. It was kind of predictable. And what we thought was predictable was the winner. We thought it was me the man. That was faster than the Rey Mysterio, more powerful than a big show. Even a very career as a single bound. Do, 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 do. Super Reigns! And if Reigns would have won, it would have ruined everything that WWE was trying to do tonight with this new era of war with new people winning. With Sasha winning, all that momentum would have been shit if Reigns would have won. You know what I mean? Because no one was going to remember Sasha winning. Everyone was going to remember Reigns burying Finn. Thank God. Thank the wrestling gods. That was not the case tonight. A fun main event. Finn looked phenomenal his first real one on one match, especially against Roman Reigns, you know, the supposed chosen one, the guy. But guess what, Roman? Your time is up. Finn's time is now. Finn carried the match in a, in a good match with Reigns. He bought, he bought a lot out of Reigns. You know, a lot of people like AJ and also Ambrose and Wilds, for that matter. They do bring the best out of Reigns. You know, make fun of Reigns' ability and of course his lack of mic skills. But when he does take himself seriously, he can he can deal do well. I, I say about Cena too, sometimes. That Cena can do well if he has a good dance partner. It takes two to tangle. You know, Cena's had good matches with AJ, Kevin Owens, Edge. And like I said with Reigns too, he can have good matches. Especially the guys carrying the match. Like AJ and Wilds and Ambrose last night. Especially those two. And Finn carried his matchup. He really looked okay with the... I did like the ways of the Edge power, but I seen him do that before, but it was cool to see him still use that move. He used it last night. He tapped it again tonight, but he didn't. And numerous Superman punches. And super, numerous uh, spears. And a little bit of knee stopping from Finn. So big moves there, of course. Spider Man is coming alive and opened the very Finn. He got caught with a big kick. Big drop kick in the corner, leading to the coup de gras. In one, two, three! Finn Balor wins! Yay! And it was Finn's birthday. What a way to spend your birthday to make your main roster debut at long last. And plus, win an opportunity. To compete for the WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam by not only defeating Cesaro, defeating Rusev, and defeating Kevin Owens, but more importantly, pinning Roman Reigns. Man, is Reigns in the doghouse and getting punished and deservingly so. Seeing Reigns lose clean two nights in a row. Yay! Proving that the woman experiment has finally fucking failed. Because I was like, man, it's going to be Reigns and Rollins again. You know, I was like, ugh. You know, the predictable route. I say all the time. When WWE has a chance to do something shocking and new and fresh, they fucking fail. You know, they go the predictable route. Not tonight. Well, they went the predictable route by having the predictable showdown between Balor and Reigns. But we did not have the predictable ending of Reigns winning. We had Finn winning. 
So what a night! SmackDown Live with D-Bar and uh, Shane. He got a lot at the top. War of the Year. Some good matches, some good action. In big moments for NXT wrestlers. Finn on his birthday debuting. In the opportunity to face Rollins. That match would be fucking phenomenal. And seeing Sasha get a moment in the sun. And see Shaw get a Just Deuce 2. An epic match I've been wanting for so long. And a lot of others have been wanting for so long. The city's too shy on the main roster. And deliver the match they fucking deserved. Before we go, uh, other matches on Battleground I need to discuss. The only match that sucked to me, Darren Young and Miz. The ending was stupid. The meltdown of Bob Backlund. Mitty's faking an injury again. God, that was fucking pointless. Fucking pointless ending. I'm going to miss Chip the championship because you knew Darren Young was not going to win, especially it's too soon for him after coming back after the vignettes. But also, Miz is a mid card champion on SmackDown. Rusev's the U.S. champion on Wall. But a screwy ending? You know what I mean? A really fucked up ending. <laughs> so that's the only bad match on the card. Whereas the Battleground was great. Especially Origin. Zayn... The two six-man tags in the main event. And the women's tag was not bad either. So, uh, Becky and Natalia could have been better. So, uh, there you go. Epic war tonight. Some big moments. NXT shines tonight on Raw. With that in mind, you've been attacked by the review from Zach. Thank you so much. And my final thought is that this Monday Night Raw this evening was just too sweet! See ya!